Welcome to the Esports Entertainment Group Fiscal 2021 Q3 Earnings Conference Call. Today's conference is being recorded. Before we begin, I'm just going to read some brief safe harbor language. Statements we make during this call are not statements of historical fact, constitute forward-looking statements that are subject to risk, uncertainties, and other factors that could cause our actual results to differ materially from our historical results or from our forecast. We assume no responsibility for updating forward-looking statements. For more information, please refer to the risk and uncertainties and other factors that could cause our actual results to differ materially from our historical results and for our forecast. We assume no responsibility for updating forward-looking statements. For more information, please refer to the risk and uncertainties and other factors discussed in our SEC filings. And now at this time, I'd like to turn the conference over to Mr. Grant Johnson, CEO. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining our fiscal third quarter earnings call. Uh, I'd like to start off by apologizing for the bit of a slow start here. Uh, the wire service is backed up on the press release on our earnings, so no doubt will come out over the course of this call, but we just didn't want to keep uh, everybody who's online holding uh, in the dark there. Uh, I'm excited to report we had a very strong quarter with revenues growing 129% uh, quarter over quarter uh, to $5.4 million for this past quarter. In addition to that strong revenue growth, we made significant strides in our goal, in our goal to build the world's best uh, esports entertainment and online gambling company. <clears throat> I'm going to walk through some of the operational highlights, and then I'm going to pass the line over to Dan, who will uh, go into further detail on the numbers for you. So during the quarter, we completed both the acquisitions of uh, Esports Gaming League, EGL, and Lucky Dino. EGL has been a strong addition to our esports vertical, and we continue to execute our strategy of assigning professional sports organizations to the tournament platform. During the quarter, we signed exclusive deals with the Baltimore Ravens, New England Patriots, New England Revolution, Denver Broncos, and the LA Kings. We've also signed agreements with several additional teams that we expect to be announced in the, in the coming weeks. The Lucky Dino acquisition greatly increases the scale of our gambling operation. We now have a wholly owned proprietary casino platform, and the Lucky, Di and Lucky Dino has added over 25,000 unique active players uh, in this past quarter primarily in the Nordic, near the Nordic region. Uh, this is important to note uh, because the esports are very popular in this region, of course, for those of you who uh, are aware. We have been working on a number of cross-selling initiatives across all of our gambling brands. In addition to this acquisition, we launched our Sport Nation and Vibet brands onto our Maltese gaming license. And this is a significant milestone as it uh, greatly expands uh, the addressable market, market as well as access to suitable payment providers. In March, the Vibe brand <clears throat> announced sponsorship deals with the uh, infamous gaming, Peru's largest uh, esports organization, and movie star Liga Pro Gaming League, one of the most innovative and fastest growing esports leagues in the Latin American market. These deals should give us significant brand visibility in the region, and subsequent to the end of the quarter, Vibe.bet also signed an agreement with Team Liquid's Liquipedia. Vibe.bet will be integrated into select Liquipedia pages allowing Liquipedia's millions of monthly visitors uh, to see betting odds and place bets through Vi while having a safe experience. By partnering together, Liquipedia and Vi Bet are uh, able to install safety mechanisms that ensure betting information not only is only shown to users of legal age in the 150 whitelisted jurisdictions around the world where we operate. In addition to our success internationally, we continue to be on track uh, for entrance into the U.S. market. Our New Jersey gaming license application was submitted to the Department of Gaming Enforcement back in February. <clears throat> we anticipated positive approval in the next several weeks and expect to be live taking bets in New Jersey over the summer. Of course, you know, COVID has led to some of these delays, uh, but uh, we are very confident of this timeline. We're also in active discussions with several additional states for licensing. Uh, our M&A pipeline remains very robust. Uh, a few weeks back, we announced the acquisition of Holodeck Media. Content's becoming increasingly more important in the gambling sector, particularly here in the U.S., uh, where customer acquisition costs have been elevated. This acquisition puts us in a position where we own and control our content platform as part of our uh, executed on our play, watch, and bet go-to-market strategy. Finally, I'd like to provide uh, an update uh, in our acquisition of GG Circuit Helix. We expect this transaction to close on or before the end of the month. There was a minor delay caused by unusual activity in our stock, and 
we simply will not sell equity down at these levels. As a solution, we've been working on a structured financing at higher levels than our previous round. The lender also recognizes the current price does not represent a fair market value of our equity. Regarding the transaction itself, we've integrated the teams into our esports vertical, and they're working on a number of exciting projects together. As announced on April 15th, GG Circuit has launched GG Fuse, a decentralized crypto mining solution for their land centers, uh, land center customers. Excuse me. This product allows these centers to mine for Ethereum when their computers are not in use, uh, when the gaming computers are not in use. The feedback so far from the customers on the product has been extremely positive thus far. We have uh, uh, very strong hopes for this. Uh, this product. Last week, Helix also announced they partnered with Riot Games to host the Summer 2021 North American uh, CLS Proving Grounds Tournament. The tournament will unfold <clears throat> over three weeks, starting in July 12th and 13th. We're very excited to be partnering with Riot, and we think this shows how deeply esports entertainment group is embedded into the infrastructure of the esports ecosystem. We expect Helix to open several additional uh, centers over the next fiscal year, beginning in July. Several of our pro speed sports teams have expressed an interest in opening co-branded facilities similar to the one that Helix currently operates at Patriot Place in Foxborough. Lastly, I'd like to give you an update on LandDuel, our player versus player skill-based wagering platform. We've settled on the casino partner for the pilot program, which is going to launch in July, uh, well, July, uh, July, August in Atlantic City, uh, depending on <laughs> COVID. We're very excited to announce additional details around this platform, and we are working uh, that we're working on. We'll come back to you with, with the coming weeks. As you can see, we have a tremendous amount going on across all our business verticals here at EG. We're pleased with the progress we've made in just over a year since our uplisting just last uh, April, and we see a massive opportunity still in front of us. I'm now going to turn the line over to Dan, who's going to walk through the financials from last quarter, and then look forward to answering your questions. Dan, over to you. Thank you, Grant, and uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks again for joining today. Um, the close of the Lucky Dino asset purchase on the 1st of March ensured that we enjoyed one full month of revenues from their casino brands during the quarter, and this helped drive group net revenues to $5.4 million in the quarter, up $3 million, or 129% versus the prior period, and was $0.4 million ahead of the previously communicated third quarter revenue guidance. Nine months year to date revenues through 31st of March were $8 million. The unique active players across our betting brands rose to over 40,000 players in the month of March, with average revenue per active player surpassing $80 in the month, driven by a successful player retention strategy and strong growth margins. Total operating expenses for the three months ended March 31st were $11 million, up from $8.1 million in the previous quarter. The increase was primarily attributable to one-off transaction charges related to the Lucky Dino acquisition, increased payroll, higher stock-based compensation charges, and increased marketing, legal, and professional services fees related to increased business activity as we launched across several new territories on our Vi.bet and SportNation.com brands. Total net loss for the three months ended March 31st was $12.4 million up from a net loss of $7.3 million in the previous three-month period. This was principally driven by four component charges, increased stock-based compensation, transaction-related costs connected to the Lucky Dino asset purchase, depreciation, and change in the fair value of warrant liabilities related to the Argyle Entertainment acquisition. In total, these four buckets of charges contributed over $7.4 million in net losses between them. On an adjusted EBITDA basis, we recorded a loss of $2.1 million in the quarter, improved from an adjusted EBITDA of minus $3.8 million in the previous three-month period. Turning attention to forward-looking guidance, and with the imminent close of the Helix GG Circuit acquisition, we re remain committed to the previously communicated four-year fiscal 2021 revenue guidance of $18 million and the fiscal 22 revenue guidance of $70 million. The acquisition of the Lucky Dino iGaming brand, together with the launch of our eSports-led Vi.bet brand and our Sportsbook-led SportNation.com brand, all under our multi-use gaming license, offers significant cross-selling opportunities between our betting brands going forward, and opportunities to further diversify and launch into many of the 150 jurisdictions the MGA license offers access to. Furthermore, as COVID restrictions reduce, 
we expect to be able to report an increase in revenue streams from live events and tournaments, and further boosted by the launch of our Vi.gg platform on our New Jersey license in the coming months. Moving on to our balance sheet and liquidity, we remain capitalized to execute our growth plan and address our key priorities. As at March 31st, we had 16.9 million of cash on hand, up from 5.6 million on December 31st, driven by net proceeds from the sale of approximately 4.1 million shares issued for warrants exercise during the quarter. Whilst funds from the $30 million equity raise that we completed in February were fully used to support the Lucky Dino asset purchase. Our current monthly net cash burn rate on operational activity has reduced to circa 0.6 million post the closing of the Lucky Dino acquisition, improved from 0.9 million per month pre the acquisition. Whilst we continue investment in building out our tech team to support our platform development and augmenting certain back office functions to meet regulatory and compliance obligations, we continue to be focused on finding efficiencies within our enlarged group's cost structure as we integrate new acquisitions. In summary, therefore, the quarter was an extremely eventful one from both an organic growth and acquisition perspective, and we will continue on this path. The impending closure of GG Circuit Helix, the expansion of our iGaming operations into several new territories, augmented by multiple cross-selling opportunities between our betting brands, and the forthcoming relaxing of COVID restrictions, which will allow for more in-person tournaments in association with several of the Tier 1 pro sports teams we've signed partnerships with, all ensure that we remain extremely optimistic of finishing the fiscal year strongly and accelerating our development into becoming the most diversified esports online gambling company in the industry. And with that, uh, operator, please can we now open the line for Q&A? Absolutely, thank you. If you would like to ask a question, Please signal pressing star 1 on your telephone keypad. If you are using a speakerphone, please make sure that your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. Once again, that is star 1 if you would like to ask a question. And we'll take our first question from Michael Kopinski with Noble. Please go ahead. Thank you. I have a couple of uh, modeling questions uh, for you first. Um, in terms of uh, cost of goods, uh, in the quarter, it seemed like it was relatively low, and so gross profits were much higher than I expected. Can you just talk a little bit about gross uh, profit margins or maybe just the cost of goods and what you anticipate those margins to be as you kind of go forward? Sure. Gross profit margins, um, so net revenue less our cost of revenues were about 57% in, in the quarter, um, up from, uh, I believe, uh, 47 and a half in, in, in the prior quarter. Um, you know, we were, I mean, I think we, we benefited from strong gross margins in, in the month of March on the casino brands. Um, so I think going forward, 57% is, is probably slightly on the high side. Um, but certainly mid 50s would be, we'd be aiming for, uh, going forward. Would did those, um, were those affected by the lucky dino or what, what I, I guess it was just a little surprising that it was so high. What what was what was driving those gross margins? Yeah, we had um like I said a strong performance in in March. We had um you know a number of of uh, VIPs who who um you know we 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 made good margin from, um and that that drove the strong performance in in the month of March on the Lucky Dino brands. Gotcha. And then G and A expense. Were there extraordinary items in G and A this quarter? Yes, so we had some um, obviously some transaction charges related to um, the Lucky Dino asset purchase, um, both um, financing and legal and professional fees that were included in that number. What were the uh, what was the amount of professional fees in the quarter? I would say, I mean, total um, total costs related to, uh, I guess. I suppose one-off transaction fees were about one and a half million dollars in in the quarter. Gotcha. And then in terms of um, your EGL acquisition, and can you just kind of describe to me how um, that business is going, and in terms of the tournament plays, how those are playing out um, with the leagues at this point? It, you know, just give us a little flavor of that. And then also, if you you know, it sounds like you're getting close to closing on 
um, Helix. I was just wondering if you could just kind of give us an update on business trends there as well. Sure, I'll, <clears throat> it's Grant here. With the EGL, <laughs> the the challenge we have is the first of the NFL uh, tournaments kicks off in uh, next month. <laughs> so we 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 continue to attract a number of teams onto it, but they, they wanted to tie the tournament uh, as they got closer to the league kicking off, and, and so the final events would be held at uh, at the stadiums on, on a game day. So unfortunately, we don't have the a lot of data on that. We had the one event with uh, the Kings. Uh, we'll be announcing the prize winner shortly, and uh, they will be also playing against some of the Kings members, and we're going to we're going to stream that uh, that uh, gameplay. Uh, but to, to get more to your question, Michael, the the bigger numbers uh, just haven't come in yet because the bigger tournaments just haven't started yet. So it's all very new uh, for for us and with the teams. I can say, as we messaged earlier in, in my address, uh, the teams continue to be excited about this as a key component of their digital marketing plan going forth with uh, going forward with their, their fans. To the GG Circuit Helix, um, did you have a specific question for me that I no. Could I some Grant, I know that you uh, just recently said that uh, Helix is kind of opening up uh, now um, to be full service. I was just wondering if you could just kind of give us your thoughts about, um, you know, are they 100% um, capacity at this point? Where where are they in terms of, um, you know, just kind of trends in general? It's it's obviously developing <laughs> daily, as as we know. The circumstances have been anything but normal over the last little while. Uh, I am uh, advised as of today that uh, by the end of this month, things should be back to uh, capacity in, in the Northeast, um, which is where the, the Helix centers are primarily located. Uh, so, yeah, we, we do expect in June to be back to, you know, I'll, I'll use the air quotes, normal. Uh, in those in those facilities, and then of course, as more and more uh, jurisdictions get back to normal, the other, the larger G circuit infrastructure of land centers will also uh, return to normal uh, over the course of uh, the summer. My conversations with the teams are that everybody feels quite strongly that by September uh, in the United States we'll be back to capacity events. Gotcha. And just one uh, last question in terms of uh, the revenue. Um, you indicated the guidance, I think, for fiscal 21 to be about $18 million. Um, and so that implies, you know, a $10 million number for your upcoming quarter. I was just wondering if that included Helix into that for a month, or were, were, what, could you just kind of give us some thoughts on how the uh, composition of that revenue guide is uh, for Q4? Yeah, I mean, it assumes a month worth of revenues from, from the acquisition in June, beginning of June. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again. That's Star One. If you'd like to ask a question, we'll hear next from Scott Buck with H.C. Wainwright. Hi, good afternoon, guys. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, first off, you've had about two and a half months now of, of Lucky Dino. I'm curious if you're still operating that completely separately from Sport Nation or beginning to, um, you know, try to cross-sell the, the online casino and uh, sports wagering platforms. And if so, you know, how, how is that progressing? Uh, well, as you can imagine, uh, Dan, if it's okay with you guys, I'll, I'll, take this one. <laughs> I'll take this one because I was just talking to Harold Matthias this morning. Um, as you can imagine, with COVID, it, it creates its own challenges uh, yeah. with – this type of integration. So things things have – we've been really pleased and impressed with how smooth they've gone under the circumstances. Uh, however, they would have gone more quickly had we been able to move around and, and, and get together. I, I suggest that's the same with all companies. Uh, where we're at is we're just now uh, getting to the point we're going to be able to start cross-marketing. So we don't have uh, – to date, we have not been able to take advantage of that. Um, going forward, we should start to see that in uh, through June, getting some of the cross marketing going on. Uh, both Lucky 
Dino and uh, the Sport Nation uh, teams have been focused on that. Uh, we have a new pay-and-play product, uh, sort of a one-click uh, bet product coming out with uh, Lucky Dino, which will be launching uh, also in the summer, which we expect to uh, accelerate you know, the revenues. Uh, we will also be integrating a single wallet, so customers will be able to move freely between Lucky Dino, uh, Vi, and Sport Nation. That is going to take a little bit longer to get that completed. I, we expect that to be more of a uh, fall product integration. Uh, that, that, that's very helpful. Do you mind telling us what Lucky Dino revenue was for that month of March? Uh, yeah, it was circa three million dollars. Three million. Okay, super. And then I'm curious, what what's the initial interest been like in the crypto mining product, and, and how do the economics work there for for you guys? Uh, initially, <clears throat> extremely strong. Uh, as, as I've discussed in previous conversations, Helix uh, Centers tested it for about a year before rolling it out. Uh, it got rolled out last weekend through 50 uh, centers. Uh, that uh, run off the GG circuit software. I, I mm -hmm. believe uh, there's roughly a thousand, so we're just rolling it out a little bit systematically. We're extremely encouraged. I can't give you specific numbers because, of course, we've just you know finished the weekend. But I, I can tell you that uh, it will have a positive, a substantially positive impact on our revenues. Okay, that's super. I appreciate the time, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And once again, as a final reminder, that's star one if you'd like to ask a question. All right, it appears there are no additional questions in the queue at this time. I'd like to turn the conference back over to management for any additional or closing remarks. Uh, I, I, I just want to again thank everybody for joining us. Uh, thank you for your ongoing uh, support. Um, you know, obviously, the last the last couple of weeks have been a bit of a bit of a challenge in the markets. Uh, we need to do our best to ensure that uh, your dollars entrusted to us are utilized properly. We uh, are very mindful of uh, anti dilution, so that's you know that is going to be a big component going forward. It always has been. Uh, in terms of what you can expect from us, uh, I, I think we've done exactly what we said we would do, and you can expect more of the same uh, as we as we progress uh, forward. There's lots, uh, lots coming. I, I believe you'll all be very satisfied as, as shareholders and followers of GMBL. Uh, I don't have any further comments, Jeff or uh, Dan. Uh, sorry, the only thing to clarify for me, sorry, the, the question regarding Lucky Dan signer revenues in, in uh, March, uh, total revenues were circa $2.3 million for the Lucky Dino brand, not the $3 million. Just wanted to clarify that. Apart from that, everything else is uh, good from my end. Uh, Jeff, did you have any, any statements you'd like to make here before we wrap up? I think we're good. Thanks, Thanks everyone, for coming. All right. In that Thank case, that I'll turn that back over to the, the operator. Thank you, sir. That does conclude today's conference. We do thank you all for your participation. You may now disconnect.